Data Live is back and we are on our final season. I still have my fingers crossed that we might have like another season because I don't want the show to end just yet. It's the series that saved my channel. Now, last episode, what was the most important thing? It was like a recap episode. It's like, what's going on? We're in the middle of an all out. Well, we're about to start an all out war. Westcott's going crazy. We're starting to plan our defenses. Kudumi's doing her own thing. And Shido's calling her my honey. I don't know where that came from. Remember our friend back in high school? Not your friend in high school, but Shido's friend in high school. I forget his name. Tonoyama? Tono Motoyasu? I forget. But you know what I'm talking about. Hiromatsu? He, I swear to God, he's the one that would say my honey to Shido. Where did he learn from that? Maybe from him. I think we ended off with some planning right kudumi's doing her own thing and we're trying to strategize how to counter westcott because westcott can not read our minds but he can basically he has eyes and ears everywhere so we got to be very careful about this it's kind of interesting how discreet we have to be while strategizing for the war but let's get started on today's reaction we're making uh <sighs> omurice <laughs> yeah always bigger on toka's side yep yeah. Texas Toka. She's spanking that shit. You know what be fucking hilarious? Dude, during the visual novel of uh, Rio Reincarnation, Yoshino would always try to help with the cooking and fuck shit up and start crying. But imagine Yoshino trying to make a rice ball with Yoshino in hand. Like, how the fuck would that work? The puppet, <laughs> if you just fuck himself the rice in Yoshino's ham. Yeah, come help out, lollies. Oh boy, if she's gonna be breaking some plates, gonna make me fucking cry. Pads? Yoshino's pads spout fire. Eh? You say a bunny doesn't have pads? Do you have pads? Are you talking to me right now? Is she talking to us right now? No. Because, like, it looks like. She's just answering herself. She broke the fucking fourth wall! Now, let me just tell you this. Have you ever seen Yoshino and Yoshinon talk at the same time? Just think about that for a second. She's still so shy, bro. Wait, what? What are we doing? Are we, are we not supposed to be preparing for a war against Westcott? You're gonna start doing non-erotic words that sound erotic. Cockle. Cock. Bountiful. Sex. Ball sex or sex? Machu Picchu? Isn't that a place? Machu. How is Machu Picchu erotic? Well, chew is like the sound of kiss, right? They always go chew or kiss. What do you find sexually arousing about a ruin of the Inca Empire? That's what Machu Picchu is, right? You said it too smart. Because you said Machu Picchu, an actual place. Chew. Kiss. Say it. Okay. It's, chew. It's, it's the chew. It's the chew. That's not even erotic. That is some kindergarten fucking shit, bro. That is the most vanilla kindergarten. Uh, she is very pure, though. Part of a maiden. You know, in season two between the Yamai twins, I thought that Yuzuru was better and Kagwe was just annoying because Kagwe just seemed to be another loud tsundere type. And Yuzuru's comedy was funny, akin to Tobichi Origami, which I really enjoy. But ever since the. OVA or the movie where we had to take every girl to a date and I think Kaguya messed up her plans to go to a ramen place but it was closed and Shido had to figure something out and she was all embarrassed. At that point something changed. At that point I was like oh shit she's way too cute. And then ever since then it's just been moments like this where it's like ah I feel like Yuzuru was ahead in the beginning but now Kaguya might be ah I, I, I don't know man. Shinko! <laughs> What, what, what are we doing right? <laughs> Chinchilla? <laughs> Bust! Sexa! Chupacabra! <laughs> so basically, chew again. It's the only thing you got going is fucking places or animals with chew in it. 
Capybara. Blood sucking UMA. She is very knowledgeable about everything. Scenes where that boy was cool? Shit. There's a lot of good Shido moments. Season 1. Uh, first date with Toka. Sunset lighting. Tobichi Origami is on standby. Ready to shoot. Toka starts asking. But I'm a spirit. Can I really stay here? And Shido's like, I'll take responsibility. And Toka's like, but everyone's gonna say no. And then Shido's like, they don't matter. All that matters is me. That was fucking peak. Other peak moments. After that, Yoshino, saving Yoshino through the blizzard by walking through it almost dying. Yes, that was sick. The episode where Kurumi's on top of the roof and Shido goes there and tries to like fight her without any powers. Right? Shido has some really fucking great moments. Summoning Sandalf on season 2, right? And there's so many more. God damn, this is so far just a recap episode, bro. Straight up. This is a fucking recap filler episode right now. My honey too, last year. Yesterday, yeah. Sorry, last week. I think it has to be when he refused to give up on kissing me even when I was nearly dead. Now, this is a line that can only be said about anime main character. Like... Think about this in the context of real life situation. If you said this, this sounds like what the fuck is going on? Shiori. Yo, tank a moment, tank a moment. Season two. Yeah, so you're the twins. That boy died multiple times. Two hundred something. You know what? I've been kind of waiting for this. Only Kaguya or I would exist in this world, not both. But when are we ever going to fuse? Maybe for the final war, the Yuzuru, the Yamai twins will actually, like, fuse? I don't know. Because, like, I've been saying this shit since season 2. It's like, yo, they gotta have some kind of fucking mode where they do a fusion and become the Yamai thing. But so far, it hasn't even happened once yet. They're really saving this till the very end. <laughs> Who is it? Kotori. Toko? Alright, come join us. Everybody make you onigiri. Okay, I'm gonna be really mean and fucked up for no reason right now. And this is less than the anime and more than the visual novel. Bro, if, I, if, if Yoshino called me and she took like 10 minutes to say this line because she speaks so fucking slow because she's a lolly and she's trying to be cute and she talks bro in the visual novel bro oh my fucking god it is so fucking annoying how uh, I, I want can I I'm like oh that's what do you want it's not even her fault it's just every lolly speaks like that not to be too nervous. Yo, when's Kyohei gonna talk? The Maria is, uh, she wants a full course massage. Disgustingly filthy? Hmm. This is rare. Seeing Koturi indulge in a snack that's not a lollipop, but drinking like some kind of like, I don't know, dumb drink. What's the mission? Okay. Phantom, Phantom. She is Phantom's goal. Oh, she's talking. The bear is there. What does the Phantom want? It might be something surprisingly silly. I'm gonna believe her. She's straight up probably correct. Some dumbass, stupid reason. She's probably right. I just can't think of it right now. And when we find out, we're gonna be fucking bust out laughing. And Reina was right. Look at the biggest fucking onigiri in the middle, bro. Toka's onigiri is the size of like four and one, maybe like six. Yo! It's the song! Wait, what? Why is, why is it all... What the fuck happened to that one? Cilantro onigiri, you're insane. What the f... I love cilantro. Some people apparently don't have the enzymes necessarily to um taste 
cilantro the, the way that cilantro enjoyers do. So it actually tastes like soap for them. So there's that out of the way. But on top of a cilantro enjoyer, if the entire fucking onigiri is cilantro, that's crazy. What's strengthening our mind? Oh. There's nothing scientific. She just figured out what she hates the most and gave it to her so she can conquer what she dislikes the most for in preparation for war. Oh. <laughs> so huge! Pickle wasabi! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what would be in mine? Mine would have all cheese. I don't like cheese too much. And it's probably gonna be a crazy take because a lot of people love cheese. Something happened to me when I was a kid. You know those like um McDonald's cheese, American block cheese, orange like rectangle thing you touch slices? I used to eat that shit every day as a snack. I fucking loved it. When I was like in elementary school, that's my snack after school. Everything, I just eat that shit. So many fucking cheese slices. But one day, I ate so much that I like puked and then suddenly it became a mental block. This is an actual phenomenon. Psychologically, something happened in my brain to the point where I started to avoid cheese as much as possible. And now, even now, like if there's cheese in a pizza or a hamburger, I'll eat it. Nothing wrong with it. But cheese by itself, I just can't. I just can't, bro. Mm. What if Shido hate the most in food? Mm. Each one of the girls pew. I can't say that. What they put in there, bro? Is it for your imagination? They put something there. Oh. oh! What the fuck? Yo, Miko's like a fucking worm. <laughs> she straight up sleep crawls? Should she tell Toka that just came over late night of a one on one that you're thinking about another girl? We're, we're trying to save her. It's important. Kurumi salvation. How do we do that? How do we save our best friends? Do we ha can we can we do both? If we do that, then no other spirits exist anymore. Toka and them wouldn't exist, right? Wait a fucking moment. We have like time traveling abilities. I mean, fucking Kurumi from five years ago was showing up here. Why? 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 Can't we do some kind of fucked up time shit where like we go back and like, you know, do something with the, the origin spirit so that Kurumi's best friend didn't die, but then we bring Kurumi's best friend into this current timeline or some shit? Just like pick that, just cut and paste into here and everybody's happy. The spirits exist, we've conquered whatever phantom origin spirit is, everybody's happy. Kurumi's got her best friend, everybody's happy. Can't can we do something like that? Oh, of course. With the mother show? <laughs> For what? You felt like you didn't do anything. Then he wouldn't be in this danger. Everybody just wants to feel responsible, but no, it's our fault. Yeah, we received a lot of their saliva, that's for sure. That was like episode one, season one, huh? This is nice though. Toka, I'm sure, has a lot of people reserve space for the first spirit we ever met. <laughs> oh shit! Here he is! And the growth trio! Yo, 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 the growth trio, please let them have their moments against Ellen. Let them have their time, like in season two, repeatedly foiling the strongest sorcerer in history. <laughs> I'm waiting for me to say gross. What? There are lots of lame. Okay, it's the translation has gone to that's so lame instead of gross. Honestly, that's not even a far like 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 right over here. 
hot springs trip. Like we already kind of did that as an OV in season one. <laughs> No, he already has, bro. It's already happened. That's so late. <laughs> bro, I can't believe that this girl, like five fucking seasons in, her only line, the glasses, I think her name is me. She's still sticking to the script. It's that's so lame or gross, right? Maji school or something. They pay this voice actor for like a decade. Her only single thing is to say that over and over and over, bro. There it is. Oh, 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 in the sky. I think that's a Ratatosker going invisible, maybe? Tony, what you thought? Here comes the gross. Here it comes, here it comes. We're leaving you behind. Oh my bad, I thought that was Ratatosker ship. So this is DEM ships that went invisible that Tonomachi saw. Finally! And it's not a fucked up line. That's rare. I don't think I remember these guys last season. Yeah. What a speech, Captain Kotori. Got everyone hyped the fuck up. Mm, uh, is AST gonna help out? Yeah, that's kind of funny actually. We're like supposed to protect the spirits, but now the spirits are just like we're just using them as soldiers to protect us. She is right. I never really thought of it like that. Was she going for the Oni Chen appeal? Where's the other Emoto, man? Where did Mana go? This isn't flags, right? Oh, there's Mana. Mana's right there. This is not flags, right? No, uh, they're, they're, no, they're just hyping a Kotori. We're just having a moment. These are not death flags. Oh, Kotori! Oh! That's fucking rare. This is super rare, bro. This is super rare, but I hope nothing bad happens. This whole speech was to kind of hype up Kotori, right? Can we? Oh, we can jam Belzebub? Okay, apparently we can talk in certain circumstances. Huh. Link spaces and stuff. But why? Your power is so versatile. That line seems like an excuse and a justification because Muku is too fucking cracked, right? Muku is way too fucking cracked, so we need to nerf her, or this just straight up wouldn't be fair. Technically, she could just seal everything away, right? Even that proposition by the Yamai twins is saying linking the storms and space together. Muku is too insane, so how do we make sure that the battle is not too one-sided? Well, you know, power is shared, and Kotori is basically saying there's like different traps that could happen. That's basically what this is, right? Uh, DEM's new realizers. New models? New models? New banjo stats. They're OP now. The other girl beside Ellen. Wonder why she's here helping out though, if she hates Westcott. Capture her. Then shut down all the banjo snatch. That's OP. So this works against their favor. If they based all the banjo snatch off of Artemis, then all we gotta do is send, you know, Mana and Origami out there, fight Ellen and, you know, Artemis, capture her, and then rewire all the banjo snatch. And the AST still might offer some backup. She's only obeying DEM because they manipulated her memories. This explains how they mentioned that Artemis 
didn't even want to be here, but she's working with it. I thought she had an ulterior motive, though. She just might be being brainwashed. Okay. How? Oh. Really? You want the most important person in the front lines? Go kiss Nibirukuro? What's the plan? Alright, and the other side, what are they cooking up? Westcott. Westcott and left guy is just some random NPC ship commander. Wait, are you going in Westcott? No shot. You're actually gonna go in? Alright, here we go. New Artemis Bandersnatchers. Nani? Wait, 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 how? Kurumi was ready? That's Kurumi, right? Wow, she was there the entire time! You got all my attention. Too late. Oh shit! Yo, remember season one and two when it was a lot more like wholesome and casual? What did the AST do with their fucking ability to do this? They like opened up random shops to go on dates for Toka, right? Random carnivals, random fucking food carts, right? We would restructure the town to mess around with the AST in season one and that was very cute. But I forgot that we could do shit like this. Straight up just like the buildings all have just like anti-fucking, you know, aerial like artillery. Bro, every fucking building? Not every, but you know. Yeah, this city's cracked. What's your plan, bro? Just gonna back out? That's like the confident laugh still, huh? And that's the episode. Hey, today's episode was a little bit more recap, but more like, you know, uh, what is it? It's like the night before the war, right? Everyone needs their own resolutions. Everyone needs to be reminded what we're fighting for. And it's Shido. Shido was so good. He saved every one of us. Remember all those wholesome moments. Toka even got her little 1v1 scene. The difficult thing about this show is trying to give every girl equal amount of attention because as the roster of girls grow, you gotta, you know, the amount of attention we can give to each kind of like, it gets reduced, right? But remember, Toka was there from day one. And it's nice to see that, even though, you know, some of the other girls like Kurumi and, you know, they're getting a lot of the attention. Yo, this is nice, though. Seeing the gross trio with our, you know, best friend, Tono something. Fuck, I should know his name by now. Tono Matsu or something, right? They're fun. I hope that the gross trio actually has their moment against Ellen. They don't need to fight Ellen. It's just, if they did something to somehow hinder Ellen and fighting, and then it, it's not, that's like the beginning of the downfall of Ellen. It's just like a little call, nice callback to season two stuff. Because that was like cute and fun back then, right? Just random three high school students taking down fucking one of the greatest sorcerers in the history of this world. And then now we're just basically fighting Westcott, but things are looking pretty good. Kurumi was already there in preparation, took out all the Bandersnads. Our Tengu city, dude, it's an entire fucking naval force of anti, you know, air artillery. But Westcott, he's like, nah, chill. We're chilling. There's nothing wrong about it. I'm not sure if this laugh is just fucking cope, but I don't know. He seems pretty confident. So let's see what he has cooked up for us next episode. But that's it from me. If you're still here, if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time, take care.